Hello everyone, welcome to this month's In the Community Special. I'm Jennifer Beck. I'm excited to introduce you to this month's guests. Both are very well connected in the community. You probably know them if you're from Lima and have huge hearts to serve. But what caused me to invite them on the show is the way God has moved in their lives and their careers. Do you ever feel like God nudging you to make a change? Even though we know God will never leave us nor forsake us, taking a leap of faith can be emotionally difficult. Well, today I'm talking with Ben and Sarah Anderson, and we start all the way back to before they were married and before they lived in Lima. I am so pleased to have Pastor Ben and Sarah Anderson here in our studio today. I invited them here because I just think they have a really neat story to tell. Pastor Ben is the somewhat newly uh, or, well, ordained, you've been ordained for a while, but the newly yep. positioned into the senior pastorship of Lima Baptist Temple. Uh, but there's a lot more to share. Of course, Sarah is Sarah from Sarah Sweets. Yes, <laughs> she didn't ask me to put these on set. She brought them to us and I said, oh, of course we're gonna put these on set. Great, great cupcakes and cookies and so much more. But let's talk about the Andersons. I wanted to have you guys come here because as I think about how you are so involved in ministry in Lima, whether it's in the church, whether it's in the business or just in the community, I just think it's so neat how God is using you. And let's go all the way back to the beginning and let's talk about how you came to Lima and what you were doing and even what brought you here because you're not Lima people. Right? You weren't born and raised here. No, we were you not were... born and raised here. We've actually lived here 14 years now. I think we moved in 2009. So, or I did. You did, huh? Yeah. So that was before the two of you got married? Yep. Okay. Yep. So 2009, it was May 2009. I was graduating from Cedarville University. So graduating with a degree in finance. Mm -hmm. And I had been working for a state firm agent down in Xenia. Uh, Ohio, which is real close to Cedarville mm -hmm. University. And I knew, I thought I wanted to stay with State Farm. So I was looking at all these different opportunities over in Illinois. Uh, we are high school sweethearts. We met mm -hmm. at band camp. I played the saxophone, she played the flute and you know, always had our eye on each other. Uh, so we grew up together uh, in the same hometown. Wanted to get back to that hometown because that's where our parents were from. And I was looking at job opportunities and you know, God kept closing, you know, mm -hmm door after door after door. And I'm like, man, this is kind of, kind of junky, right? This is where I, you know, we wanted to be. Uh, but different opportunities in Ohio with State Farm kept coming up. Uh, and this one uh, lady, her name is Zoe Redman, great Christian lady. And she kind of at the time oversaw Northwest Ohio and State Farm agents. And her and her recruiting team kept reaching out to me and said, no, you know, really not interested in staying in Ohio. And finally, I was like, you know what? I'll talk to you guys about it. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we have a couple opportunities. One is in Lima, Ohio. I'm like, oh, Lima sounds interesting. I was like, is that Cincinnati area? Is that <laughs> Columbus area? Like, I, we just, I had never heard of Lima, had no idea where it was. She's like, well, it's kind of positioned very uniquely <laughs> <laughs> off of 75, you know, between, you know, Finley and Toledo, Columbus, and, you know, relatively close to everything right yeah. so you know I actually drove up by myself you know one Sunday after church uh, just to kind of check out the area missed all my exits ended up getting off on 81 which is like the greatest first impression of Lima <laughs> and you know but I had a really strong sense like this is where we were supposed mm. to be not sure mm. if it was the Waffle House or any of those other restaurants, <laughs> but I was like, you know Nothing what? against the 81 exit. I don't yes. want you guys to think. <laughs> yes. I didn't we, I love laugh, it now. but we all know that. And it looks a lot better now. They it have, does. They have the it signs does. and all that. So, <laughs> um, so that's kind of how we got to Lima. So, and then through the, the interview process with State Farm, um, you know, Sarah and I talked and we're just like, you know what? We're young. I was 22 at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, we weren't married. Sarah was finishing up uh, her last year at Greenville College near St. Louis. And we just talked. We're like, you know what? We feel like God wants us here. We don't really know why. It's kind of a random opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was a good, very good business opportunity from that aspect. And we're like, well, we'll try it. If it doesn't work out, then what do we have to lose, really? You know, we're just going to take a step of faith. And, and we kind of thought we'd probably only be here a few years. I mean, I don't think we really... Mm -hmm. Or we just hadn't thought that far. Mm -hmm. We're just like, let's give it a try, see what happens. And 
Sure, there's a big world out there. No one's mm -hmm. forcing you to stay in Lima, yep. unless God is, of course. Yep. Um, so were you engaged at this point? You came, you moved here, you yes. were still finishing college. Yep, he was a year ahead of me, so um, I had one year to finish up, and we had gone to separate colleges, um, which was good for us to kind of have some time to figure out who we are as people, mm -hmm. and, um, but we dated long distance that whole time. Yep. So he lived here for a year while I uh, finished up my degree in math education. And did you hear that, folks? Math education. A lot of people probably don't realize at this point. Yes, Sarah of Sarah's Sweets um, calculates all of those recipes. Yes, I, I <laughs> use that math degree daily by <laughs> scaling up recipes. And um, I mean, it's good when I'm running my PL and all that to have all the math background. But, but you came here and you were a teacher. Yeah, I That's taught it. Um, so once I moved out the next summer, um, I actually wasn't able to get a job. I had interviewed a few places and kind of reconciled to sub substitute teaching, which I mean, I want to say that was a bad thing, but it wasn't what I had dreamed of doing. Mm -hmm. But then I was actually um, offered a position at Lima City Schools like a week before school started. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to get a classroom set up there, and then I taught math there at Lima Senior High for three years, um, during which it was really great for us as a couple, because we didn't know anybody, um, to kind of get plugged into the community and just really meet a lot of people and really learn a lot about how the community here is and be able to just see where needs are um, ready to be filled and met. Um, and then during that time, one of the summers, it was after my second year of teaching, I had always loved to bake, so I started my business on the side as a hobby. Um, I got a license so that I could sell desserts to the Met because they were getting ready to open, and then it kind of took off. Um, so kind after, kind of, huh? Kind Just of, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Exploded. <laughs> a lot of hard work. It a was lot funny. Of when I, I was at State Farm at the time, and I said, "Sarah, let's have a competition for our Facebook pages." And I was like, "I thought for sure I'd be able to get more likes than she did." Yeah, we were trying to get to like what, 300, yeah, some or 500 number. number who could get there first. And uh, I thought for sure I would, but she blew me out of the water in like <laughs> two hours, and I think I ended my state farm page when I left at like 500 people. Yeah, we're at like, like 20, we're at yeah. like 20,000 now. <laughs> That's 12 years later, 13 years later. So take me back to you're a young married couple. You're in a town that you don't have family roots in. You're starting, you're, you're, you're making new roots. You're yep. making people, wow. How was God so important during that time? Newly married, new location, new yeah. jobs, um, a new environment, new community. Yeah, one of the things that I tell all the married couples that we're counseling is one of the best things Sarah and I did was move away from everything that we knew, hmm. um, from our family, from our town. I mean, we knew zero people. I mean, we knew hmm. not one single person uh, in Lima, and that does a lot of things, uh, not only for your relationship with Jesus and your faith, uh, but your relationship with each other. I mean, it just makes you trust God that much more. It's like, okay, God, we know we're supposed to be here. We don't know anybody. And you just rely on him to uh, direct your steps. We also grew, I mean, closer to each other. You know, when we got frustrated with things, you know, I didn't have my parents to run back to. Mm -hmm. She didn't have her parents to, to run back to. And uh, it was just, it was really good. And it allowed us to put into practice a lot of things that our parents uh, taught us. I grew up in a great a strong Christian home where my parents were very involved in their community and church. And we just tried to model that. Mm. Um, we did, Lima Baptist Temple was uh, the first church that we, we went to. I started going there in 2009. Um, didn't get super involved at first just with State Farm and traveling for training, uh, but try to plant roots there and just really serve the community in uh, different ways that we can. I don't know if you'd add anything to that. Yeah, as far as like getting involved in the community, working at the school really helped. I ended up helping with the cross country team because I love to run. Um, I was able to meet some friends by like randomly seeing people running and following them to find out where the running group met. <laughs> Not the most safest thing to do, but um, I still run with some of those people like to this day. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, just being able to try to plug in where you could and develop relationships with people and um, see where they led. and. What was the point that caused you both to realize, hey, maybe we're going to live in Lima for more than a couple of years? Wow, I can't, I'm not sure the exact point. I think for me, it was definitely after a few years at State Farm. I mean, we truly just, and that's one of those things that only God can orchestrate. I mean, when you're right where you are supposed to be, I mean, God just 
it's kind of like when you have a child, right? You, you give, you're like, at least for, from a guy's perspective, it's like, how are we going to love this child? It's kind of a little bit with Lima, but God, you know, gives that to you. And we just really love the community. It was a couple years of being at State Farm, but I think probably when we realized we were going to open the bakery here, we really wanted to yeah. have a family here. I think too, like, and I would tell this to my students, and it's been, I don't know, a decade since I had high school students, but they were like flabbergasted that I would move to Lima, Ohio, mm -hmm. and try to explain to them that life is what you make it wherever you are. Like your, commun your surroundings are your surroundings, but it's what you do with your relationships and the people that is what like make or, makes your life what it is. And it's not necessarily how much there is to do or how many cool restaurants there are or how many activities that can entertain you. It's about plugging into the people around you. And I, I, I don't know if they ever got that. They're 15, 16 year olds. <laughs> um, but for us, that's what it is. I mean, Lima is no different than where we grew up in the cornfields in Illinois. Like yeah. it's literally the same. It's just, you know, 400 miles this way. Um, and it's all about the people for us. So as we've talked about, and as you all know, Sarah is Sarah of Sarah's Sweets. And so we go to a transition point. You have transitioned into the bakery. You're still a State Farm agent. Yeah. Um, from the financial standpoint, that's, that's a pretty good business plan. I it, mean, really, you guys, I'm just being set. In, well, I mean, I know the bakery's got its challenges, but yeah. insurance agent's not a bad job to have. So really, you guys are setting yourself up for a pretty decent future, I'd say. We, we were, and that's, it's still to this day, people look at me and they're just like, even people at my church are like, Ben, have you literally lost your mind? I said, well, you have to be a little crazy to be in ministry anyways. <laughs> so that's, you know, par for the course. But, you know, we get that a lot. You know, why, you know how does this all make sense? Uh, ben, you had a, you know, thriving business at State Farm. We did. I mean, we were a top agency in the country, top 3%. Uh, we always got million dollar round table, which is top 1% of all insurance financial providers in the world. Um, and we had a great team. I mean, I love those people. I thought I would be there, you know, for, for a very, very long time. Uh, but State Farm kind of allowed us to open up the bakery. Yeah, without his like steady career, I don't think we would have ever taken the risk mm. of starting the storefront. Mm -hmm. I can't say that for sure, but that's what allowed me like, oh, if I make zero dollars for three years, like we'll be fine. And yeah. that's cool because God had that yeah. set up for you mm -hmm. so that that would work that way. Yeah, but all during that time at State Farm, I mean, so my parents were missionaries. Um, mm -hmm. So I, it was always in the back of my head about ministry. My dad actually works at the corporate office for State Farm now, so ah. that's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but I always had ministry pegged for like later in life. I said, hey, let me save all the money for retirements, let's build this big business, let's you know, impact the community that way, uh, which is not a bad way. I'm so thankful for all the, the mm -hmm. business owners and Christian business, business owners who are you know, really making big impacts. But you know, I started to get just a little bit restless with that. You know, I always thought, hey, if I you know, get this bonus, then you know, I'll be happy and satisfied. If I get this house, you know, I'll be you know, happy and satisfied. I mean, the things that we all struggle with, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, as we progressed and, you know, as I hit different milestones at State Farm, I was like, this is never going to end, mm -hmm. you know, unless my satisfaction is, you know, placed in something else. And mm -hmm. God kind of made me restless, you know, yeah. at State Farm. And there are some changes going on at State Farm, not bad changes, uh, but just that got me kind of thinking. And it was about 2017, 2016 that I was like, you know what, maybe ministry could be sooner, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, in my life. And, you know, here we are today. So do you remember, you say you were restless, but do you remember as a couple making that decision that that, that kind of change was going to happen, that you were going to, can you remember what it felt like inside? Yeah, for me, it felt like he almost was just always chasing after something and then, would get it and then, then it just like start right over. Like, oh, now I have to work on this goal. I have to work on this goal. And it was hard to just, and have the trajectory always changing. Like at least for me owning my own business, like I set my goals and go for them and I don't have a lot of other people to answer to. Um, so that I think was a challenge because it seemed like the... I think the moment though, it was 2018. Um, we actually went home to visit my family uh, my parents go to a great church and, you know, I had shared a little bit with Sarah, you know, during these years, like, 
about that, but just wasn't really sure and didn't really want to freak her out either, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, God was as much working on Sarah as he was, you know, me at the time. And it was uh, October 2018, or it might have been September, go home, visit my family, go to their church. And I walk in, I see their bulletin, and the title of the message is God's Call to Ministry, Part 2. Mm. And I was just like, you have got to be kidding me. I should just probably leave and not listen to, <laughs> to this message. I mean, it was just kind of one of those foreshadowing things. Like, I'm like, I know God's going to use this in my life. And I think that was a big moment for me. And we kind of looked at each other and we're like, okay. Um, and in that, he was talking about uh, the Apostle Paul and some different things I don't really remember. Uh, but he went through 10 questions that were adapted from Jason Allen's book, Discerning God's Call to Ministry, and just really practical mm -hmm. things like, are you qualified? Do you desire the ministry? Uh, do you have the character qualifications? How's your family life? You know, are you passionate about the gospel? You know, all these different types of questions. And as he went through them, I was like, oh, I can answer yes to all of those. <laughs> so, so in reality, he had a sermon that was literally yeah. just for you, yeah. but the rest of the congregation got yeah. to listen to it And that's how a well. sermon is, right? It's a bunch <laughs> of different sermons every Sunday. And that was a moment that God used for both of us, I think. We kind of looked at each other. I was, you know, typing all the notes into my phone, still have it, and I still use it to this day, you know, with that. And after we got back, that's when I reached out to, you know, Pastor Al. So he was, you know, our senior pastor mm -hmm. at the time. And just started conversations, not expecting to, you know, end up at Lima Baptist Temple, but hey, just help us sort, sort this mm. out. How did that feel for you? I mean, I know for me as a wife, I like things to be steady. Yeah. I don't love change, especially when it comes to my husband's job or things. I just like things to stay the same. And so how was that for you? I, it was okay. I mean, I was pretty much at that point, I had seen how kind of not unhappy he was, but like I saw a need for a change. Like if this will, um, I don't want to say make our lives easier, but if, if this is right for us, like it will happen and I will support it. By that point too, like I had been taking a steady income from the bakery, so it wasn't going to be this huge risk. You know what I mean? Yeah. So God had, God was working the finances out for all of yeah. you, which, you know, you hear that many times. If God's called you to yeah. it, he's got the whole plan figured mm -hmm. out. And so yeah. he was, he was stirring in your heart way back mm -hmm. before the bakery even started, but needed to get that bakery going mm -hmm. and established and well so that you could make this transition. Yeah. 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 So how, let's talk about the transition then. You moved into the as, assistant associate pastor? Associate pastor. Associate yep. pastor. Yep. And how did that, what did it, what did it feel like to walk out of, um, walk out of the insurance world and walk into the ministry world full time? Yeah, you know, well, you know, you know, Sarah makes it sound like it, it, it was, it was a smooth transition. It was scary though. I mean, we were giving up a lot, you know, at State Farm, um, you know, money wise and just kind of that safety net and just having all the, all the, the cushy things and uh, so that part was a little bit scary, but we both felt like, hey, this is what God is calling us uh, to do uh, in this season. And, you know, just all the questions like, you know, do the people want me there? Do they not? How, you know, just all those things that, you know, Satan tries to get in your head with and get you going down all those different paths. One of my struggles was how, how will the kids grow up, you know, always being kind of in a fishbowl, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something I've really wrestled with. Um, yeah, so just kind of going through all those things and talking to other pastors and friends and just, you know, getting their advice on it. But the actual transition, so, you know, I talked to Pastor Al October, November of 2018. You know, by December, he was like, hey, why don't you join the team here? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of funny. He told me when I first met him, so he came in 2013, I believe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was shortly after um, we were volunteering or doing some, I forget what it was, but he's like, you know what? You're going to be in ministry someday. And I was like, there is no way. Like, there is no way. And other people had been saying that too. It's like, no, it's just, you know, maybe down the road, I'll run a nonprofit or a soup kitchen or something like that. But, you know, being a pastor, I don't think so. <laughs> and here you are. And here we are. God, so has, that, that initial... God has ways to uh, make sure the paths he has for you happen. Yeah, but the initial transition was good. And then the church, we presented to the church. Sarah and I literally shared our story. You know, it's still out there on, you know, YouTube. I kind of cringe looking back at, you know, mm -hmm. how much uh, the public speaking has grown but, <laughs> um, and, and preaching and teaching. But Sarah and I both shared to our church on a Sunday morning in January. And, you know, that was received well. And a month or so later, you know, the church voted on it. And, you know, it's been crazy and good and fun and 
you know, hard, you know, journey since. And how is that now? You've recently been installed as, as the, the senior pastor now at Lima yep. Baptist Temple. And what are the emotions that now go through as you see this next step that God has for both of your lives? I guess I'll start. I mean, it's still, anytime you take a new journey in ministry, it's like, okay, they're the, what are the unknowns and, you know, what's going to be the next step? Uh, one of the things my dad, you know, told me early on in life was, you know, Ben, be th so thankful God doesn't reveal his plans for you because you would be freaked out of your mind. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the story for us. I mean, if I moved to Lima knowing that I would be the senior pastor of Lima Baptist Temple, I would have been like, peace out, Lima. Like, <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> I'm going to find my ship sailing to Tarshish somewhere like Jonah. But, you know, but he doesn't do that. And he prepares your hearts along the way. And I think there's lots of excitement. You know, there's a little, you know, you're nervous, of course, of just different things and, you know, building your team and still wanting to impact the community and serve the community and grow the church. And, but for me, it's excitement combined with, you know, a little bit of healthy uh, nervousness. For me, I would say about similar, you know, excited, nervous. Um, for me, like the balance is probably going to be the biggest challenge of like serving my family and my kids, playing the role I need to play in my business to keep it chugging along. Mm -hmm. um, I have great people at the store, but how can I make sure that we, you know, continue to pour into them and then um, serving the church in the ways that I can. Yeah, because pastor's wife is a job. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a job in itself to be the, to be the wife of a pastor in a church. And I mean, that's not somewhere I ever thought I would be, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I mean, I'm a pastor's kid, so I grew up yeah. watching my mother. You know, she was a teacher, but then I watched her also being in that position to have yeah. to be the, the helpmeet for her, for my dad, you know, in the church. And that's, yeah, and it's nice, and Sarah's already done a bait. I mean, even yesterday, we're, you know, starting some new small groups. She's like, hey, who are the people I can text mm -hmm. and do and, and help, you know, get plugged in and... It's really been a seamless process, but it helped. You know, I had been in the interim role for almost a year, really. It was probably 10 months. So we'd been doing a lot of mm. the things. So um, being able to just pick up off from there, it's not like starting from scratch yeah. would be a much bigger challenge, I think. But we're excited to continue the vision that really Pastor Al laid for the church, you know, and he, you know, he was the one that implemented Go Serve Love. He was mm. the one that really kind of challenged our church to be more outward focused rather than just you know, focused, you yeah. know, inwardly with, you know, not bad things, but not exactly fulfilling the, the Great Commission. So we're excited to continue to, you know, reach out to the community, serve the community, share the gospel, you know, really try to meet needs, not needs that, you know, are easy and practical for us to meet, but what are the needs of the community that really, truly need met? So we have uh, just a few more minutes left okay. to talk and a lot of things we could talk about with them, um, family things, uh, business wise, there's so many topics we could go into. Um, they're, they're very involved in, in, in the Christian community as well as just the community in general. Sarah, you're the vice president of the West Ohio Christian Chamber and you are the vice president of Heartbeat of Lima, correct? Yep. Am I remembering that mm -hmm. uh, yep. correctly? Yeah. Um, but as a kind of a sending out to the people who are, are, are watching, what can you say to them to encourage them if maybe God is nudging them to make a big change, just like you had to make that decision? You could have chosen to say no to what yeah. God, and that may, you know, it wouldn't have been a good idea, but you could have. You could have done that because fear gets in the way of the it things does. that God calls us to do. So what could you say to these people who are thinking, yeah, I, I am being nudged to make a big change or a little change or something. Uh, what can you encourage them with? Yeah, I guess a couple things. I know for Sarah and I, you know, it's, you know, even moving to Lima, that was a big step of faith. And early on in our marriage, we just resolved to say, hey, you know, we're really going to try to take those steps of faith that, you know, God places uh, in our path. And they are scary. And it is nerve wracking. And there are a lot of unknowns. But one of the things that we've seen over and over and over, and it's nice. I know we're still young. I'm 36 and Sarah's 35. And we still, you know, our testimony is still growing on God's faithfulness in our life. But when we look back on even just moving to Lima, opening mm -hmm. up the bakery, opening up State Farm, you know, having a family, starting a family, you know, we can see over and over and over again God's faithfulness and how he's been by our side every step of the way. And typically, if you're wrestling with something or you're unsettled and you feel like God's speaking to you, I mean, he is. You need to take mm -hmm. action on that. 
and take that leap of faith. You know, somebody once told me it's kind of like going off a high dive. You know, you almost need somebody just to kind of push you. And that's why surrounding yourself with great people and encouragers and other strong Christian people can help, you know, you discern, you know, is this something that I want or is it really God speaking to me uh, in our life? So I think just seeing God's faithfulness, I mean, just take action, take that leap of faith. I mean, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? It's scary, Ben. It's it, scary. Is scary. <laughs> it is scary. <laughs> but, but God, God, is, is God does not want us to be fear, living in fear. He does not. Yeah. And he's faithful every step of the way. Any thoughts on that? I would just say that through all the decisions, um, like God has always given me a peace. Like, mm -hmm. like it, it's going to be hard. It might be really challenging for a season, but this is where you need to be. Um, and like he will give you the skills. Um, to get through it, you know, the words to say, the decisions to make. Um, and I know it's kind of hard to explain, but at least for me personally, that's how it's always been. And I imagine there's a key to staying in the word of God, yeah. staying in prayer, being in the church, yeah. you know, putting yourselves in positions where Absolutely. you can sense what God's leading you to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And getting back to the peace thing, I mean, Sarah and I, if both of us don't have peace about it, you know, God values that unity between the husband and wife so much that if there's not peace between both of us, it's a good chance either the timing's not right or it's not something that we're supposed to do. So or there's times we've had to like wait a little bit longer, mostly for me to come around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is patient. Yeah. Um, yeah, very good. All right, well, I think we are out of time, but Pastor Ben and Sarah Anderson, we're so happy to have you with us. You can find them at Lima Baptist Temple. Um, can watch that right here on TV 44, but also information in, on the screen as far as service times and other things as well. Thank you so much, not for just being here, but for your investment in the community and your willingness well, to follow Well, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Now time to eat some cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, thanks to Pastor Ben and Sarah Anderson for sharing their testimony with us. Do you know someone who has a testimony to share on how God is working in his or her life? We'll nominate that person for a future episode of In the Community. Send your ideas directly to me at jbeck at wtlw.com. Finally, we also want to remind you that it's your prayers and your financial partnership that allows shows like this one to be possible. Thanks for your financial gifts this month and in the future. You can donate online at wtlw.com forward slash donate by phone, by mail, or stop by and see us Monday through Friday. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima. I leave you now with Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You know, it's not our good works that get us to heaven, but when we live for Jesus, it is our good works that others can use. Or, or it just shows God's amazing love. So. What can you do for someone today to show them how great God is? Well, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this edition of In the Community.